Hi, it's Kelleen Bishop, the Preparedness Pro. You're watching another installment in our homemade cat food video series. Um, I'm mixing different types of fishes with different types of foods and seasoning, and we're gonna can the cat food ourselves. It will be so much more healthy. It's also a great way to make use of fish that doesn't have that perfect look that you would want to serve company. In other words, it's not that big, thick filet. Um, or if it's past your expiration date and you're just not crazy about eating it, there's still plenty of time to use that fish. Um, if you puree it really nice and fine or chop it really nice and fine, you can still use that fish for cat food. Even my dogs enjoy it periodically, but we'll stick with the cat for now. All this is, this is catfish that I have pureed. And this is just what I have discovered to be the best way to accomplish this task because when it comes to making cat food and dog food, I do it based on percentages, not on measurements. Because I just never know how much uh, fish I'm gonna have at any given time. Um, we had a little problem in that our freezer stopped working and so all of a sudden I had all this fish that was thawed and still cold but um, all of a sudden I had to cook a whole lot of fish. So the cat is getting the best, the best of this. Alright, since this is catfish, I'm going to do just a little bit of pumpkin to make it just add a little bit of sweetness to it. Again, when you're making cat food, you want about 70 to 80 percent protein, and then the rest can be your flavors and your oils, maybe a little bit of substance to it. And I'm going to do some raw sunflower seeds. So, in your French accent, you can tell your feline friend that for dinner tonight we are having a sunflower crusted trout with a pumpkin puree. <laughs> Make sure you do the accent. <laughs> the sunflower seeds are adding a little bit more protein, but plus they're also giving me some oil. Um, the trout is, is oily enough, um, but I like to just give a little bit of difference for it. I'm also gonna put a smidge of real salt because you still want the vitamins and the nutrients in the salt that you're going to use to season. And it does need to be a little on the salty side when it's that type of fish. And then in this case, oops, I need my... I'm also going to add just a little bit of broccoli. Um, frozen broccoli is fine. You don't want more than one big chunk. It's gonna, it's gonna completely decimate in the pressure canning process. So you don't have to worry, but don't put them, don't put the chunks in too, too big. And they can just be frozen as you put them in here. That's fine. Whoop! There we go. Fetch, Fido, fetch. Okay, here we go. Just a little bit. It'll just add a little bit more flavor to this trout. I'm gonna do a couple more crowns and we'll be done. Again, this is freezer burned broccoli, as you can see. I don't know what it would look like if I cooked it in the microwave directions. Um, probably wouldn't look quite as freezer burned. But it's a little freezer burned and that's fine. It's still got some nutrients in it and I'm making up for that with the sunflower seeds too. I just want a little more flavor for her. And there we go. Whoops, run away. Run away, run away. All right. I think we're good. One more chunk there. All right, so now I'm just gonna take this and mix it all together. Or I could just take my rings off and go in with my hands, probably be easier. It's nice and moist, so I know it's got a good amount of fat. I don't need to put a lot of other fat in there. And the pumpkin will give me some of that, as well as a little sweetness for her. You can do this with canned pumpkin, or you can do it with freeze-dried, but you'll need to um, reconstitute the freeze-dried or dehydrated squash. A yellow squash would be good in here. Okay, we're good. 
So now I'm going to wash off my hands real quick so that I can properly load the cans, the jars, excuse me, and I'll be right back. So now we're ready. We got this all mixed up. This is catfish, not trout. I know I keep saying that, but okay. You don't want to, because this is so um, dense, you don't want to smash it down in the jar because you want enough room for the pressure to circulate. Just enough. Just enough so it just goes up to this ring mark here. Okay, and I'm just going to fill all the rest of the jars and we'll be right back. Okay, so we have most of these filled and I have too much. Um, to cram into any of these. I don't want to press this down, so that's okay. I'm sure I'll have excess uh, amounts in another mixture that I make up, so I'll just set this aside for now. I'm just going to put a little bit of water in these. I don't have to put much because I don't have any grains that, um, or beans, any legumes that I have to cook. Um, so just enough just so they get that savory, savory little drippings. And again, normally I would worry about um, air pockets, but I'm not here. When What happens is, is when this is done pressure cooking, you won't see the clumps so much because it'll be cooked. It'll look more like a fish soup, for lack of a better word. Okay, so now that those are done, now we've got to clean off the lids on all of these, which I did before we started putting in the, the mixture because you don't want anything on the rims. It's going to harm your seal. And then, of course, you put the flat lid on there. You turn the ring until, you, it, until it gives you a little resistance. And then once it gives you the resistance, you just do fingertip tight. So we're going to go ahead and put the lids on all of those. And we're going to cook them at 11 pounds of pressure for 100 to 110 minutes. 100 minutes should actually be fine since it's the half pints. A little more than I typically cook uh, or can chicken or beef or pork, but when it's fish like this and dense, you wanna make sure you cook it all the way through. And it'll still be nice and tender because each little one of these jars is like its own little pressure cooker. So everything will be nice and tender for the kitty cat. All right, we have my favorite pressure canner. This is the All American brand. I strongly recommend that you get this particular brand. It will not be worth it in the long run for you to save a couple of bucks, even if it's a couple of $20 or $50, what have you, on cheaper brands. This is your life that you're gonna try to take care of because of your canning efforts. You really don't wanna cut corners on that when it comes to the food. This will handle load after load after load after load whereas the cheaper brands particularly presto i am definitely not fond of i don't feel that they're safe you whatever you pick you want to make sure you have a metal to metal contact and that's what this is you also in your pressure canner you will get one of these and you want to make sure that that goes down on the bottom of your pressure canner like so because you never want the jars to come in contact with the direct bottom where all the heat is so we've got all of our little half pints that we've made for the cat food. And we're just gonna place them in here, like so. You'll also notice that I actually have a flat cook stove. And all of the manufacturers out there say that their canners are not recommended, or just plain don't work with flat cook, flat cook stoves. However, that's not accurate. This one works just fine and dandy. However, your really, really older models of the flat cook stove, um, I don't advise you to, to use uh, this, but uh, if it's some of your newer models, it works just fine. The problem with the flat surface is that you may not get appropriate heat distribution and it may compromise your pressure canning, but if you're paying attention to your pounds of pressure that you're maintaining as well as the time, then you should be just fine. Okay, now we're gonna add water. Adding hot water just will save you a little bit of time. However, most people add too much water is you're going to put in just enough water so that 
it comes right up to the head space on your jars on the bottom. That should be plenty of water for you to do your mini loads, or mini layers I should say, of your pressure canning. So now you put your other layer down. What I like to try to do is to have it just cover the lips of the outside jars. It doesn't always work that way, but I try. Now you're going to put in your next layer. Okay, and we actually, with this particular canner, that's as many as we're going to get in this one. Um, but sometimes your lids will be high enough that you can put in yet another layer, like so. This doesn't work with this particular pan, but you could actually put in another layer and then stack them on top. However, in spite of how many pints you have left or how many jars you have left, please do not ever try to just stack them on top of one another in here to make use of the room. I'll show you a couple of tips and tricks so that you can be more efficient with your time in the pressure canning, but we're going to start with this. So this particular pressure canner, the All-American, you'll see a faint indentation right along the edge here. And then on the top, on your lid, you'll see a not so faint arrow. So to put this together, you just wanna line those up together and then this will just slide right on nice and neat. Okay, then what I do, again, this is just in the interest of getting the right seal, is with these, I go caddy corner from each other. So I bring them up, just do a little bit of tightening here, not much yet, and then turn it do the same. That way I'm ensuring that I am getting equal amounts of pressure so I'm not going to create any vulnerability. All right, so now you're gonna tighten them down nice and tight once you get them all up. Okay, and you can actually turn your stove on once you get the water in just to save yourself some time. But now what you have is you have this little weight here and on your weight, the numbers that you see are telling you what kind of pounds of pressure. So if you were going to do 5 pounds of pressure, 10 pounds of pressure, or 15, that is the weight that would actually go down here. However, since we're just starting, we're not going to have a weight on here. The first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that enough pressure builds up that you start getting steam expelling from here and you want that to go for about five minutes. That helps to build up the pressure properly so it's not gonna fall back down. Only when you have this steam that will, will come out for about five minutes, only then will you actually put your weighted pressure on there. So, now it's in the uh, stovetop's hands and I'm just gonna wait until we start getting that steam to expel and then I set the timer for five minutes and we'll just keep at this. It's really easy. You'll just see how hands off and how fulfilling it really is and it's gonna cut your budget significantly. We, we used to spend about $185 every month on pet food. Now the serving sizes and I'm getting a much better quality and they love it. Um, now we're not spending anywhere near that. Sometimes it's as little as $11 a month if you don't count the jars. So we'll be right back. Okay. So our canner has been exp expelling steam now for five minutes. So now I'm going to put the hole that corresponds with the 10 pounds right on there. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna start looking at our geared gauge here and it's gonna get up to 10 pounds of pressure, which is what we want. And I just wanna maintain that. I don't want to exceed it. I don't certainly don't wanna fall underneath it. When you know that you're at that right, nicely balanced pressure and, and uh, steam, is you'll hear this make a fuss just every once in a while, like about every three to five minutes. This, you'll wait to bring your heat down until after you get your 10 pounds of pressure. So uh, right now I'm cooking on high, and I will continue to do that until it hits my 10 pounds of pressure, and then I'll start scaling back um, just a couple of points each time until I'm maintaining that nice pressure with just a little bit of noise coming on my weighted side. So as you can see here, our gauge is way past 10, so we're about 12 and a half. So this is making all kinds of noise, so it tells me we're too high. So now we want to turn this down. I'm going to turn about a halfway down. Do not just go on too long. You'll run out of water in your pressure canner, so it's important that you get your pressure 
Future and a Night. 